Hey, que la que hay, mi amigo, Rocky here from SpeakSpanishFaster.com, and in today's video, we are going to talk about indirect object pronouns in Spanish. So today I had planned to have a video on sentence structure for you, but while I was outlining that video, something kept coming up. You see, a few weeks back, I did a video on direct objects and direct object pronouns. That's probably going to be part one of a mini part series, and I'll explain why in a second. Um, but I also in that video said that I would get to the topic of indirect pronouns. So while I was trying to map out the sentence structure video, I realized that it just wouldn't be possible to thoroughly give you proper advice for sentence structure without giving you some context on indirect object pronouns. Similar to direct object pronouns, indirect object object pronouns are not something that you can master in a day, nor in just one video. Spanish teachers spend weeks covering these in traditional classes. The beauty is you can learn at your own pace with these videos, and you can watch them as few or as many times as you need to master them. After this video, I highly recommend referring back to the direct object pronouns video. I'll put that link in the comments for you so that you can easily access it, as well as a link to our free conversational training class that will help you rapidly improve your Spanish. Without further ado though, let's jump straight into today's lesson. Okay, vamos a empezar. What is an indirect object pronoun? Let's start. What is an indirect object pronoun? So an indirect object pronoun tells you whom or for whom something is done. And don't worry, I'm going to be kind of going back and forth, kind of recapping between a little bit of what I covered with, ob with direct object pronouns and direct objects so that you can easily understand what's the difference between an indirect object and a direct object. And then that will help you understand what's the difference between an indirect object pronoun and a direct object pronoun. All right, so first, let's see an example of an indirect object. Okay, not the pronoun, just the indirect object. So he gives the food to his mom. Okay, now if you remember what we covered from the last video, he would be the subject. So the subject can't be the object, right? So he is the subject. He gives. Gives is the action. He gives. Who? Re what receives the action that's giving? The food. So that's the direct object. He gives the food. So the food is receiving the gives action. Now, for whom is the food for? Who does he give it to? That's who. That's, that's how you really figure out the indirect object is who. So for who is this action being done? And that is his mom. So his mom becomes the indirect object. So if we break the sentence down, we have he is the subject, gives, which is the verb, the action, the food, which is the direct object, because remember the action, the verb is giving the food, and then to his mom is the indirect object. So for whom is the action being done? His mom. All right, and you're gonna see this pattern and uh, you'll start to get it, the more we kinda really drill this into your head, the, more, the easier you're gonna be able to understand it. Okay, so first let's cover um, indirect object pronouns before we really start breaking down how to use them. Um, so we have me, te, le, nos, os, les. Okay, so the me is of course for the me, te is for you, le, and I'll cover this later, but le can be confusing at times because le covers the he and she and also covers the usted, which is the formal of you. All right, then we have nos, which obviously is nosotros. We have os, which is vosotros, and you won't really see that too much unless you're in Spain, um, but it does exist. And then you have les. So les is, it can be you all or it can be them. So that's why os doesn't really exist in Latin America or in the Caribbean or in South America, anywhere really other than Spain. They don't really use os. Instead, they just use les for y'all or them. So ustedes or for ellos, ellas, they use les for those. Now, one reason I would say this is a little bit confusing 
for students is because these indirect pronouns are pretty much the same as the direct object pronouns. The only difference, and you'll see in that video, the only difference being here, instead of le, it's direct object pronouns are lo and la, los and las, and then indirect object pronouns are le and les. And this is important because this is one of the biggest mistakes I see um, not only non-native speakers, but even native speakers make uh, when they're when they're speaking is sometimes they use the pronouns in the wrong areas. Okay, so next, let's kind of really get into this. Okay, so Tom gives the food to me. So again, Tom is the subject. Tom gives, that's the verb, gives, dar, to give, the food, la comida, to me, me. So I'm me. I am the indirect object, okay? So who is Tom giving the food to? He's giving it to me. So we change, going back to here, we change, instead of saying to me, we change that to me. Tom me da la comida, okay? Tom me da la comida. All right, so Tom gives me the food or Tom gives the food to me. Both of those mean the same thing. So now let's look. And let's hit the te. Tom gives the food to you. So Tom te da la comida. Very easy once you start getting the hang of it. Tom gives the food. Now this could be to him, to her, or to you in the usted form. So Tom gives the food to him. Tom le da la comida. Tom le da la comida. Okay, and I'm going to address something that will help you with the le in, in a second. Uh, but let's continue. Tom gives the food to us. Tom nos da la comida. Tom gives the food to you all. And this only exists in Spain. Tom os da la comida. And this kind of threw me off when I went to Spain because I don't use this. But in Spain they use it. So you have to really, you, you do have to know it, especially if you plan on going to Spain. Now, Tom gives the food to them or to y'all. So remember in Latin America and the Caribbean, they use the ustedes form for to always say y'all. There's, there's really no informal y'all word that they use. They just use the ustedes, ellos, ellas, ustedes. They always use les. Okay. So again, um, Let's kind of remove just the pronoun with the verb. So we have me da, te da, le da, nos da, os da, les da. So he gives it to me. He gives it to you. He gives it to him, her, or usted, you. He gives it to us. He gives it to y'all. He gives it to them, whether it's them boys, them girls, or y'all. All right, so now we're going to get into, I guess I should have color-coded these, but now I'm going to go over some more sentences. And matter of fact, I can do it right now. We're going to go blue for direct objects. We are going to go red for action or verbs. I just like to say action because it's easier for people sometimes. And we're going to go yellow for indirect objects, okay? So this should help you out a little. So my mom gives me a hug. Whom does my mom give a hug to? Me. So I'm the indirect object because my mom gives. The action is gives. What is she giving? A hug. To whom? Me. So you can see here, mi madre me da un abrazo. All right? Mi madre me da un abrazo. Now, as you'll see here, mi madre, subject, Indirect object here, da un abrazo. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned that I guess I should have, but now I can, is that the indirect object always comes before the verb that's conjugated, before the conjugated verb, okay? So anytime you're using the indirect object, you move that to in front of the verb. So that was available in the previous examples I gave you, but I just didn't point it out. So mi madre me da un abrazo. All right, now let's go here. Next one. 
And you can see I'm going in order, me, te, le, just so you really can stay on track. So I buy the gifts for you. For whom do I buy the gifts for? Again, buy is the action. What do I buy? What? The gifts, that's the direct. So what? Direct. For who? That is the indirect. So as you can see here, I removed the yo, and you can start. You don't even have to start with the subject. You can remove the yo, and you can say, te compro los regalos. Okay, te compro los regalos. So that's pretty easy. Again, indirect object in front of the verb. Now, remember, this verb is the action is still, this sentence would be yo te compro, but it's te compro. All right. Next sentence, I buy the flowers for her. And this example, I'm going to introduce you to something new. So for whom do I buy the flowers for? I buy the flowers for her. Okay, so. Again, this is the last time I'll really, really cover it because it could be getting repetitive for you. But I really want you to understand this. So the action is comprar. That's the verb to buy. What am I buying? Las flores, the flowers. And for who am I buying them for? For her. Now, this is where a lot of people make the mistake and might make the mistake of putting yo la compro, las flores. But that would be wrong because la is does does not exist for indirect object pronouns. Those are direct object pronouns. So I'm not even going to explain how I would use that because I don't want to confuse you. But all you need to focus on right now is this would be le for her. If I said I buy the flowers for him, it would be le. But also if I said I buy the flowers for you, but in usted form, it would be le as well. So this is why a preposition phase, um, phrase is usually added to le and les uh, because it's because of the ambiguous meaning and it can mean different things. So it can mean her, him, uh, it can mean a name, it can mean tu, but in the usted form. So that's why a lot of times when you see le or if you're using le and it's not clear on what it is that you're talking about, then you probably want to use this preposition phrase. So you want to add, yo le compro a ella las flores. So yo le compro a ella, a ella for her, a ella. This is the preposition phrase that goes with le. So yo le, yo le compro a ella las flores. All right, so remember that. This will help distinguish because it could have been, yo le compro a, a él, could have been, Yo le compro a usted. This will really help you know who is the le that we're talking about. And you're going to see the same thing in the les as well. So he writes us a letter. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but for whom does he write the letter for us? Él nos escribe una carta. All right. Él nos escribe una carta. Let's jump to here. He writes you all a letter. For whom does he write the letter for? You all or y'all? That reminds me of the Ush Hour, <laughs> of the Rush Hour movie, uh, when Chris Tucker tells Jackie Chan, like, it's not you all, it's y'all. Jackie Chan's like, yeah. It's like, no, y'all. <laughs> but yeah, so this only exists in Spain, though. Remember, el os escribe una carta. Now, if this was in Latin America, they would say, el les escribe una carta. All right. Now, I'm going to address one more thing once I get to this section. So you can see the les is just like the le. So I buy the food for them or I buy the food for y'all. Who do I buy the food for, them or y'all? Les is the indirect object pronoun here. Yo, le, yo les compro la comida. Yo les compro a ellos or a ustedes la comida. Now, keep in mind, another reason why this is very difficult to understand is because in countries like Puerto Rico, Dominic, pretty much in a lot of countries, not even just the Caribbean. I think that's a something that a lot of people get misconstrued is they think people only cut letters in the Caribbean, but that exi exists in pretty much every Spanish country. When people are speaking informally, a lot of times the S's is cut. Now, this can be very, very difficult 
If somebody says, yo le compro, but they mean yo les compro. So yo le compro, and that's probably how you'll hear it. Or in other um, words, like nos, el nos escribe una carta, but in Spanish-speaking countries, it might sound like el no escribe una carta. But that's where you just really have to kind of focus in and you'll learn more as you, you'll get the feel for the conversation. So you'll know if he's talking, if the person's talking about nos, or if he says no, no escribe una carta, or nos escribe una carta. So just be on the lookout for that. Um, that's really why it is a little confusing because people might say, yo le compro a ustedes la comida, or if you're in like Puerto Rico, yo le compro a ustedes la comida. So it might be, it might get difficult to understand, all right? So just really focus, but once you master these, you won't get too confused once you start getting in the groove and really start speaking with people. All right, so let's quickly, quickly um, recap uh, five keys to remember for these indirect object pronouns that can help you. Um, first, the indirect object tells where the direct object is going or pretty much answers the question whom or for whom is the action of the direct object, okay? So remember these, me, te, le, nos, os, les. Remember, indirect objects do not use, or object pronouns do not use lo and la. Those are direct object pronouns, okay? Lo and las, or lo and la, los and las, those are direct object pronouns. They are not indirect object pronouns. Now remember, indirect object pronouns come before the conjugated verb. So um, it's me da. So just so you know, you take who is for and you put them in front of that um, verb. All right, and just remember, le and les have different meanings, which is why they usually have prepositional phrases to make them clear. Um, so if you use le and les, it's good to add to who. So le a ella, les a ustedes. It's very good to add that prepositional phrase so that the people you're talking to know what it is you're talking about. And hopefully they do you the same courtesy so that you can know what they're talking about. If you found today's video helpful and you're looking to rapidly improve your Spanish conversation skills, I have a free training for you where I reveal my three biggest secrets to rapidly speaking and comprehending Spanish. Simply click the first link that's pinned in the comments. That will take you to a page where you simply pick the time for your class that you want to attend, enter your name and your email so you can get started with the class and go and join the class. Well, until next time, I'll see you then.